guys, it's Vanessa Morgan on Vamo Radio, and I'm interviewing fresh hip-hop artist Stefan Rene. Hey, Stefan, how are you? Hey, not too bad. Yourself? I am awesome today. So, Stefan, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? You know, I've also heard that um, you actually started your life in a different country. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yes, I was adopted in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, uh, around the age of two and a half. Mm-hmm. I actually don't know my birthday myself, but um, when I was adopted, I was extremely malnourished. I had a tapeworm in my stomach, and I was pretty close to dying myself. Oh, wow. But uh, so after I was adopted, I, I came to America, way up in Minnesota, and I, I found a passion for music, and I've strived for it ever since. Oh, awesome. That is amazing. I appreciate you sharing your story with us. No, I, I really apologize for that happening to you. But with well, you being such a strong person and able to rise from that, I really appreciate you sharing that as well. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, Stefan, um, what were some battles that you faced in your life? I see. Uh, some of the battles that I would face is... Um, some would be self-doubt, but also other people who want the best for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I believe it's sometimes people project their own insecurities in a sense of uh, not being able to accomplish their own dreams and automatically assume that you might not be able to. So right. they always tell you to make sure you have a backup plan or make sure you go to college or make sure you don't do this or that. Right. Not saying there's <laughs> anything wrong with college, but <laughs> sometimes you just have to believe in yourself and uh, do right. what you truly believe is best and take a leap of faith. Definitely. I appreciate you sharing that also with our audience. So, Stefan, tell me, have you ever been back to Haiti since then? Uh, yeah, I've actually, I haven't been back yet. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, it's a, it's a mix of uh, a few things, but one thing I want to make sure I do is accomplish all my goals here first before I do. Wow, awesome. That's really nice. So that's kind of one of the um, goals on the bucket list before <laughs> going back? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> so, Stefan, um, tell me, what made you get into music? Um, oddly enough, it was uh, when I was younger, I was listening to some music, trying to rap as a little kid. And I remember my old sisters teasing me, telling me to stop, that I couldn't rap. And Aww. I was very <laughs> stubborn, so I decided I would... I would work hard just to prove to them I could rap, but in the meantime, I I really fell in love with it, and just the way the music flows, the words, the melodies, everything that can come with it, and um, I've never looked back. They just kept moving with it. Very nice. So was your family ever music lovers? Um, One of my sisters were. My older Mm -hmm. sister was really into music. But um, so I was adopted into a, a Caucasian family way up north. And mm-hmm. one of the things was my mom didn't really want me to fall into that stereotype of, you know, being that black rapper. And she right. was a bit worried about that. Mm-hmm. So uh, she actually didn't allow me to listen to hip hop music or rap for quite a long time. Wow. Okay. So my older sister would actually uh, sneak me her old CDs. So I was listening <laughs> to some of the classic music that. N.W.A., the Eminem, the Ooh. Dr. Dre's, um, the old Kanye West, and all of those classics. Very nice, very nice. All the hits, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Sounds good <laughs> to right. me. So when did you um, realize that you had talent? And that's, that's a tricky thing. Like <laughs> uh, All throughout my career, there's times that you kind of hit that roadblock where you, you believe you're, in a sense, what would be good enough. And so you you think you're finally there, but then your eyes get opened, your ears mm-hmm. get trained, and you realize you have a long ways to go. And so you just keep moving forward, uh, keep trying to get better and hone your skills. So I, I, honestly, I don't know. I'm still working towards it. Nice. I like that. I like that state of mind, you know, still trying to hone your skills, trying to perfect your craft, you know, because a lot of artists um, today, you know, there are some established artists. I won't lie, there are some established ones. Um, but some people feel like, you know, there's no more the need to improve. There's always room to improve, no matter what. No one's perfect, so, you know, there's always room to improve. And I appreciate you being true to yourself and knowing that you still got to work on your craft, still hone your skills. So that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so tell me, how would you describe your sound? 
Uh, so for me, I would say that I'm an emotional artist. Uh, one thing that I strive for is um, I, I really used to study uh, communications when people would communicate to each other. Mm-hmm. I want to make my music believable and emotional so you'd really feel if it's happiness, sadness, pain, aggression, anger, as well as the transitions of emotions that you would normally have in everyday conversation in life. Mm-hmm. in my music so you can feel every word wow that is amazing you know um like i know like i've said um earlier um a lot of artists you know kind of abuse the use of saying drugs all the time and talking about sex and everything in their songs and it's kind of repetitive but you know i appreciate you actually being true to your own emotions and be able to share that with your audience and your fan base that is amazing that's something that's mm-hmm. gonna take you a long way for sure well thank you <laughs> so Stefan, tell me, what do you think is a misconception in the music industry? You know, you kind of uh, just mentioned it yourself a little bit there. <laughs> um, I believe that there's quite a lot of uh, toxic masculinity going on, mm-hmm. be it uh, the misconception and belief that uh, we need to over-sexualize uh, the females within the industry or females in general, mm-hmm. as well as perpetuate the uh, use of drugs and excess amounts of money and um, everything that comes with that. Stefan, um, tell me, I know we also heard that you were doing some really big interviews, including with iHeartMedia and other um, interviews as well. So how can people get seen or be heard like you have? Uh, That's just one of the things when it comes to the mindset. uh, Like I tell the artists that I work with myself that you could honestly have the best song in the world, but if you don't market it, if you don't push it and people haven't heard it, Mm -hmm. it's not the best song in the world. Right. You want to put the majority of your effort into the marketing itself. So, of course, as an artist, you need to invest in yourself because you can't ever expect someone else to invest in you if you won't invest in yourself. Right. But uh, some of that really needs to go to that marketing. And the more you market yourself, the more you're going to get noticed and picked up by um, a bigger media willing to interview you and uh, things like that. Definitely. Definitely. I appreciate you mentioning that as well. So, Stefan, um, tell us, I know you have everything put together um, as an artist. You know, it seems like you got everything put together. You've got your music career going. I've seen some kind of show you're going to be on, um, Women on TV. That was really interesting to see. So I've seen that. That was amazing. Um, so, <laughs> and it shows that um, your music career is doing really fantastic and it's taking off. So can you give your fans some insight on what they can look forward to? Uh, yes, actually. Um, so with my music, uh, I always like to make all my songs, uh, a piece to a puzzle in a sense. So every song is a little bit more of a journey that I'm, uh, on currently. So with every big project that I release, Mm-hmm. it changes a little bit of a mindset that I have that's going to be affected by the future music I have and so on and so forth by the singles that follow. So right now, uh, just a few days ago, I released a project called Provoking the Broken. Oh, wow. And that one kind of is like an explanation for who I am as an artist. Uh, the journey that I follow, it goes from you know, someone with a big dream to different uh, relationship issues, trials and tribulations I face and things like that, Mm -hmm. and the resolve that I have. But then uh, it leads into the next project, a big project I'll be releasing is called This Is Goodbye. And This Is Goodbye is going to be the most emotional project that I've ever made thus far, where it's going to cover some of the topics that artists don't (laughs) normally ever want to talk about Right. And I mean things from depression, anxiety, um, anything from cutting to uh, um, suicidal thoughts and things like that, just to show that people aren't alone in those dark times. So it's going to be a very gritty, very Mm -hmm. uh, emotion-filled project, but Mm -hmm. I feel that a lot of people will be able to relate. Oh, that is amazing. No, Stefan, I really appreciate that. You know, being able to talk about such sensitive topics in today's time is very important. And I feel like, you know, being able to 
have you actually have the platform to do it and using your platform to do it as well and you're actually connecting to your artistry which makes you even more special to me so i really appreciate you doing that as well you know there's a lot of um different kind of topics we could talk about including like you're saying suicide and cutting those are some of the more um serious topics a lot of people don't even acknowledge most of the time so i just think that's amazing Mm -hmm. so stefan tell me if you could change the world with music how would you do it no, that's an interesting thing, too, because um, one of the beliefs I always had uh, being adopted from an orphanage myself mm-hmm. was just the fact that I was malnourished, just the fact that I was pretty close to death myself. Right. I can't pretend that everyone in that orphanage made it out of there okay. Uh, it wouldn't be possible. And I, I do think about, like, the, the kids that were in the orphanage. I believe a kid has unlimited potential. They, you know, could have found the cure for cancer. They uh, could have saved right. lives. They could make a big discovery, change how we view things, change the world. Mm-hmm. Um, as I say, they could have found God. But uh, being, um, in a sense, cut short from that type of opportunity, I do take it upon myself to try to make a big difference in music. Mm-hmm. And I say in music, because I have a passion for music, so how I would want to change the world if I could would be just by connecting with other individuals, showing that you're not alone in things. I, I know there's a lot of people who do commit suicide, uh, who do feel alone, who feel isolated in this type of world. And I just want to let them know that, you know, there's a lot more people like that out there. You're not alone. You can get through it, and you can still make something of yourself. And so I want to be a representation of that. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. You know, I, again, I do appreciate your mindset for you actually looking out for other people, you know, people who are going through things, and especially from your, your own country, from where you were born and where you um, started at. That is amazing. I know there's a lot of people who don't make it out, and some people who are still hoping that they do. And you actually being able to provide mm-hmm. something for them is just completely beautiful to me. So, Stefan. Thank you. So, Stefan, um, tell me, who do you look up to the most? Who do I look up to the most? Mm-hmm. Uh, that would have to be um, all the females in my life. I have a mom, a stepmom, and six sisters. So, <laughs> um, wow, yeah, <laughs> like like I say, that's the most dangerous blessing I would have never asked for. <laughs> but, um, having them in my life, I, I think it really just allowed me to see up close and personal the strength, the resilience. Um, the fire that um, females have in general, and it gave me a very large appreciation for the females around me, um, which is probably why to this day I can acknowledge things like toxic masculinity, my own toxic masculinity that I still <laughs> need to overcome and, and and things like that. So I definitely have to say the females uh, in my life make a huge difference and it influenced me a lot. Oh, that is awesome. So, Stefan, um, tell me, if you could sit down with anyone or have dinner with any artist or producer in the industry, who would it be and why? Oh, that, that's a tough <laughs> one. In the industry, there are so many phenomenal artists that I just love to work with, even if their styles aren't similar to mine, just because they just seem like amazing people to work with. Mm-hmm. Um Anyone from individuals like Jay-Z, I'd love to uh, pick at his mind of how he works with his music, mm-hmm. um, as well as people like, let's see, hmm. oh man, there's so many people <laughs> too. Yeah. Uh, anyone from Dax to Ariana Grande even, Ooh. to, I'd love to do a song with Beyonce, um, Honestly, anyone, Hopson, Joyna Lucas, the nice. list goes on. But each of for a different reason. Each artist has their own style, their own quirks, uh, um, their own music that I, I really enjoyed. So I could see myself working with any of them. That is amazing. I could really see you doing something with like an Ariana Grande, you know, something with more of a a poppy feel that will give I think it will give a really nice fresh taste to it because your style is very fresh and mm-hmm. hers is as well I think that would be cool 
I'd love to hear that. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, hopefully one day. So if she's definitely. listening, let's make it happen. All right, Ariana, Ariana girl, come on now. <laughs> so, <laughs> Stefan, tell me, how can people stay up to date with you? Um, so you can find my music anywhere um, on any social media, any uh, platform, Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, anything like that. Um, so my social media is OK, OK, Stefan Renee. Nice. But uh, you can just find me by typing in my name, Stefan Renee. Um, but the interesting thing is I have different music in different places. Nice. So I still have okay. my SoundCloud, some songs on there you won't find anywhere else, but also uh, any distribution platform anywhere you're going to find different music too. Awesome. You guys, you have just heard it from Stefan Rene on an interview on Vamo Radio. And you can find out so much more about him by visiting all the social media links he just gave you. Or you can contact us at postproductions at gmail.com for more information. And you can also listen to this interview on our YouTube channel at PoseRec and also on vamo radiocom Thank you so much, Stefan. I appreciate this interview with you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.